Hello, World Wide Web. I'm Dr. Shadow, the Internet Personality with... Wait a minute. Oh! Anyway, it's December, and you know what that means? dino -sember. Our yearly tradition to celebrate the coming of winter and the various religious holidays the only way I know how. By bringing up horrors from the Mesozoic era that have come again to kill us all! Which brings us to today's review, The Velocipaster, an indie flick from 2018 that has been highly requested and went semi-viral last year. I really should have reviewed this one before now. The Velocipaster, as you might expect, is about a pastor who is in fact a velociraptor, as in a generic dinosaur monster, but we'll give it a recognizable name. I'd tell you the plot, but that pretty much is it. So as far as having a big grand story to tell, that's really not what you're going to get out of the Velocipaster. So uh, what, what are you going to get? Let's take a look at the Velocipaster and find out. We are immediately introduced to our protagonist, the young pastor Doug Jones, played by Greg Kohan, and of course his parents, played by Janice Youngie and George Schumzer. Oh, and they uh, couldn't avoid the visual effects. I guess I'll take care of this. Thus his parents die in a horrifying car explosion. Oh, well, at least Doug still has Father Stewart, played by Daniel Steer, to give him solace. So your parents died, Doug. It's what parents do. They die on you. Jeez, you can tell this man has had it up to here with giving eulogies. Clearly, Doug is distraught at this turn of events, and rather suddenly begins to question his faith. Don't worry, though, Father Stewart knows just what he needs. To get out more, travel, that'll help. But where should Doug go? Go where you think God will not follow. So... New Jersey? Of course. The unnaturally delectable General Show's chicken could only have been the result of sacrilege. So Doug enjoys the Chinese countryside that looks suspiciously like backwoods Oregon before suddenly a woman is seen running! Just uh, not fast enough. China is east. Well, she shouldn't have that much to worry about with our super sleuth Doug on the case whom she fortunately rolls right in front of, making this so much easier. Are you hurt? No. Ah, nothing. I bet she could just walk it off. But first, she must give him that which her attackers were pursuing her for. An ancient artifact that he must destroy. I don't understand. Just read the subtitles, dude. Fortunately, she does know a few English words. Dragon warrior. And then promptly dies, meaning Doug must now flee the attackers. <laughs> ah! 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 Oh, so that's how he gets the Velocipaster powers. The artifact touches the wound on his body. Man, it sure is unlucky that that woman didn't have any open wounds for that artifact to touch. Those powers really would have helped her. <gasps> but it was all just a dream! Or not. I guess we just wake up from vacations now. Father Stewart shows up to inform the audience that this is a recurring nightmare that Doug Jones has been having, and it's based on things that did actually happen to him, so still plot relevant. What did that Chinese say? Dragon warrior? Something like that. How Eastern? Well, not really. Dragon warrior was a North American title. Back in Japan, it was always called Dragon Quest. Doug's not really paying attention to my nitpicking and bringing up video game references for no reason. He's hungry, and feeling quite bad, so he rushes out into the streets for some fresh air, running past a prostitute, Carol, played by Alyssa Kempinski. She's on her way to work, checking where she should head with her pimp, played by Fernando Pacheco de Castro. Now what's my name? Frankie Mermaid. And why is my name Frankie Mermaid? All the intimidating gangster names were taken. You're goddamn right. Frankie's an abusive, abrasive asshat, but Carol's gotta do what she's gotta do, and what she's gotta do is turn some tricks at the park. Unfortunately for her, though, instead of a John, she's approached by a mugger. Your money or your life. They don't give me the money, I don't have the money. She's got you there. Hold on. Do I have a life? Well, for certain, the assailant doesn't have one anymore, as he is a 
attacked by a random velociraptor. Doug has transformed into a dinosaur and is tearing the criminal apart to sate his appetite for human flesh. <sighs> but it was all just a dream! Again, one that really happened. You know, maybe this is just how Doug wakes up. We've never seen him calmly rise from bed. One thing he isn't quite so used to, though, is waking up in the bed of a woman as Carol took him home with her. Though he still doesn't quite get exactly what happened last night. Was it your first time, too? Y yeah. And she obviously doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, either. They do realize this quickly enough, and Carol points out that last night, Doug transformed into a motherfucking dinosaur and ate somebody. Obviously, this is a lot to swallow. I don't believe you. Dinosaurs never existed. And even if they did, I don't transform into one. I mean, technically, the suit performer is Zachary Steer. She figures the best way to convince him is to loan him some clothes and take him out to that deep, dark section of the park she was working to show him the body of the man he ate. However, that's not the real shocker for Doug. You're a hooker? And pre-made law, but people aren't surprised as much by that one. Oh, don't worry, Doug. Like most things, this really has nothing to do with the events going forward. Just the dinosaur transformation thing that's really the main central feature here. You guys talk all the time about helping people. This might actually be the first time in your life you can. What? By, by killing people? Yes! Whoa, Carol. I know the plot's as simple as they come here, but maybe try and sell the heroism angle up a little more like Gandhi's forced hand and less Sergeant Slaughter's 18 holes in the midsection. That's pretty much what she's going with here. Listen, Doug, I know you want to help people with the church, but let's be real here. The church fucking sucks, so help people by fucking murdering people! Bad people murder the bad people. That's a good thing. This madness must stop. Doug! I have to do confessions! Right now?! Yes, right now! Which really is not the most convincing argument to make, but nevertheless, I hope Doug remembers to stop by for some clothes before he reaches work. Not to worry, he seems to have found the spirit Halloween that they got their priest robes from and makes it in time to take a confession. A confession of none other than our old pal Frankie Mermaid. He's a real bad guy, so hearing his laundry list of sins isn't doing anything to weaken Carol's case. Especially this particular sin he has committed. Oh shit, actually a couple months ago, this fucking old couple, I blew up their car. Well, hold on there, Doug. Lots of old people, lots of cars, lots of explosions. Let's be real here. This could have been anybody. It was right in front of this church. Oh my god. Still, you could have just been off that day and not heard about it. Bad neighborhood, you know. You might know. One of your priest friends comes running out, yelling, Mom, Dad, like it's his fucking parents or something like that. Yeah, all right, he killed your parents. Oh, oh fuck! Oh, uh, why did you kill them? Well, it's the beginning of the movie. They had to do something to get the plot rolling. I don't know nothing. You might as well just kill me now. Okay! <laughs> well, when God closes a door, he opens a window. And rips your fucking throat out, but still. Frankie Mermaid had said that it was a job he took, but the people who ordered it are way too powerful for either of them to do anything about. But because the body count rises, Doug returns to Carol for guidance on how to deal with this dinosaur transformation thing he's suddenly doing. Great rules. Rules. Rules, right. Like, uh, like commandments, right? Things to live by. Oh uh, yeah, I guess. Got it. There's thou shalt not kill and ah, oh, nuts. I mean, I, I could still be a priest, right? Yeah, I think. Okay, okay. Now hold on a minute. Let me take another look at that. Closer. Yeah, I think. Okay, okay. Brendan, I think you messed up the layering a bit there. Anyway, he's a priest and a dinosaur, but they need one hard and fast rule to make sure this doesn't go haywire. We'll only hurt bad people. Only the worst. I heard that one before in Death Note, and, <laughs> well... No time for nitpicking, it's time for a heroic training montage! and the soundtrack to taunt me over my life choices. Either way, the punk rock montage gives way to the next great threat. Ninjas! Ninjas. 
I mean, there's the Wuxia, but uh, yeah, okay, whatever. The White Ninja, played by Jesse Turtis, tells tales of a dragon warrior stopping their illicit cocaine dealing operations through their leader, Wei Chan. Do not speak of my Christian name here, Adeline. Played by Jie Chang Yang. Pretty sure I didn't get that right in the slightest. Well, in any case, his actual name is much more impressive than the characters. Anyway, the plan's simple enough. If the Dragon Warrior is messing up their cocaine dealing, just kill the Dragon Warrior! <laughs> okay, so I was just introduced to a clan of Chinese drug dealing ninjas with a white guy as a lieutenant. And the thing that confuses me the most about the whole thing is what the hell are they laughing about? One thing that is clearly no laughing matter is Doug's lackadaisical attitude when it comes to his faith. Skipping Bible study because he's already read the book on crime and is now reading crime too. Not like him. You haven't missed a Sunday in 16 years and all of a sudden that girl shows up. That girl's name is Carol. And uh, she's very nice. Well, yeah, but you were supposed to take an oath of celibacy, not celibate, see? What if I told you that I was different? You're not that different. There are plenty of men like that in the church. What? Does Professor X live in the basement? No, because when Doug explains what he means is that he kind of has this thing where he turns into a dinosaur and eats people. Father Stewart thinks it's time for an exorcism. Doug's worldview has clearly strayed far from the path of the righteous. God does not want people dead. Oh, I think God wants a lot of people dead. I mean, there was the Flood. And Sodom and Gomorrah. And the plagues, and... Uh, no, 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 never mind, New Testament's got plenty of new miracles that are nice and happy and... I don't think that transforming into a carnivorous dinosaur is one of them. That's that then, Doug's lost his way and it's up to Father Stewart to get the exorcist to drive the demon out of him. Which does hurt Doug, he really looked up to that guy and feels like he let him down. I had parents once. What would my parents say? <laughs> Doug lost all his friends and was going to get exercise for going all Jurassic Slasher around town. <laughs> what a hoot! This little flashback fleshes out that his parents loved him so much, their only son. And his father also gave him some handy dandy advice when Doug decided to become a priest. If you ever find yourself lost in the woods, you can't hear his voice, just follow your heart. Your heart will always lead you back home. I don't know, it only ever seems to send me to the Whataburger drive-thru. But it doesn't matter what his parents think, they're dead. Not like Father Stewart, who skips over the church's red tape to get Doug one of those express exorcisms. Where are we? Somewhere the church forgot. What? How the hell did we just walk into the Song of Songs? This is the lair of a practicing exorcist, Altair, played by Aurelio Voltaire. Doug is tasked with explaining the movie so far to him, but we already saw that movie, so Father Stewart decides instead to show us a little flashback to that time he served in Nam had his best friend war buddy Ali, played by David Sokal, talking about how great it'll be to get back when Stuart sees his sweetheart again and how they'll start a family. Ali tells him that he has to name his firstborn son Ali in honor of his war buddy who made it through the whole damn thing without getting shot. Ali! 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 No! Ooh. Maybe leave that part out. It's not all bad, though. I mean, sure, his friend is dead as shit, but for some inexplicable reason, his sweetheart has come all the way down to the war to see him! Adeline! James! James! Ooh, right, Claymores. Mm. Well, on the plus side, the cast really isn't that large. You don't have any friends left to be killed. So with Ali killed before his eyes and Adeline blown up all over the fucking place, he decided to become a priest. Anyway, back to the movie. The exorcism is commencing, and they check on how Doug is doing. Are you yeah. feeling anything? Anxiety. Quite normal. Anything else? Well, I also feel pretty stupid. I kind of got to take a leak. You mind if I step out of it? After getting through the layers of mundanity, eventually Doug mentions he feels empty. Uh, scratch that, hungry. As in, hungry. Which should be a lot more convincing to doubting Father Stewart. He has seen and believes, 
but blessed are those who believe without seeing. Vesta grips his fucking eye out and flees into the night, a beast on the prowl. Fortunately, on the way to Carol's place, he just so happens to find a handful of Chinese drug-dealing ninjas with Australian accents in need of evisceration. Well sated, he returns to Carol, distraught. Father Stewart, he tried to exorcise me. I think I killed him, Carol. Oh my god, I'm so sorry! I don't want to hurt people! I mean, not unless it's part of a montage set to some rockin' ass tunes! But all this talk about fear and anxiety and murdering your friends has Doug all worked up, so Carol calms him the best way she knows how. By giving the audience a sex scene. looks suspiciously how I'd expect a sex scene to look in the 2008 Hulk movie. Truly, one doesn't have to worry about the loss of their parent, their weird dinosaur transformation powers, or killing their best friend when you can spend the whole night having awkwardly edited pseudo-sex. <laughs> but that doesn't solve the drug-dealing Chinese ninja problem. That calls for some ass-kicking, as both Doug and Carol beat the crap out of these goons in nothing but their skivvies. Where did all these ninjas come from? I fought some ninjas last night. Maybe they followed me home. Well, if it's anything like feeding a stray dog. Who are you working for? Remember your faith, Father Jones. I guess if you want to make any sense of this plot, Doug, pray. But what's this? A cross. As it turns out, the drug-dealing American Chinese ninjas are in fact Christian as well! Oh, and Father Stewart is still alive. Lost an eye, but doing pretty good for himself. He's able to have the plot laid out to him by our big bad Wei Chan. They are Christian Chinese ninjas, and the drug dealing is super important. You see, they're doing it for God. It's not just cocaine, it's super cocaine! And when they get the whole city addicted, they'll cut the supply, and the sinners will come crawling to the church looking for guidance. That's madness. Huh. That's inhuman. Uh, <laughs> Ah, so that's why Father Stewart died and then was resurrected. It's so he could die again at the hands of the big bad. He had to kill one of Doug's friends, and cast ain't that big, and we gotta save Carol for the climax. But with all the drugs and their secret hideout, there's no way for Doug, the Velocipaster, to stop their evil deeds. Good thing that ninja told us where the hideout was before he died. Oh shit, the movie must have heard me. With that in mind, it's climax time! Doug and Carol suit up for the final showdown, and upon arrival, we come to a shocking revelation that the White Ninja knows who Doug is. Remember me now? Brother! I mean, I guess that's how it kind of works in these movies, but this wasn't even hinted at at the slightest. Which is why we're treated to a little flashback that this time includes Sam in the scenes. You're my only son. You're my only son. You're my only son. They, in fact, never loved him, always standing in the background just out of frame looking pissy, so he had them murdered. That's like the one thing that actually references something that happened earlier, kinda, so I'll take it. So they do battle! Which shows us that, no, the last battle, looking kind of meh, doesn't really have anything to do with them trying to film a fight scene in a cramped bedroom. They just kind of wing it. Oh well, Doug grabs the sword! <laughs> and the body count rises. Unless he also comes back later for the big bad to kill him off too. I mean, he's family, that's gotta count for something. Not interspliced with this, despite how much more sense it would make, is Carol's fight. Doug's done and presumably just sitting on the sidelines watching at this point as a ninja approaches and casually cuts Carol down before him. Carol. Carol. All of the ninjas just stand back and let the emotional scene play out as intended. We already got the Yul laugh, they gotta fit the Yul cry in there somewhere. With Carol gone, and less than 10 minutes left in the movie, Doug does what he does best. Transform into a dinosaur and... Oh, holy hell. I never appreciated just how well the darker scenes earlier hid how bad that looked. 
I mean, it, it didn't look great there either, but wow. Still, good enough to kick all the asses and eat them too. Except that is for the final ass. Wouldn't you know it, Wei Chan just so happened to have some handy dandy anti dinosaur transformation poison tipped arrows! That's how they killed all the other dragon warriors, just like they're gonna kill Doug. That is, unless. I think my hand is immune. <laughs> Okay, so is that a fatality, an animality, a brutality, or... Oh, what am I kidding? I know what that was. Happy ending! Wei Chan is dead. Or at least his dummy is. And this doesn't promote violence or anything because we get a convenient quote from Gandhi to cap it off. Not only that, but Doug takes Carol to the doctor and it turns out that she's fine! But it's kind of hard to come back to the church after the body count is piled up so high and you're going out with a hooker and you've decided it's best to keep transforming into a dinosaur to fight evil. So Carol and Doug hit the road together. What are you going to do next? What I do best. Following the Ten Command... Ooh. Oh well. Anyway, that was the Velocipaster. And boy, is it stupid. Just like it was obviously supposed to be. If you're gonna sit down and watch a low-budget film about a priest who transforms into a dinosaur, you're probably not going to be getting the deepest, most intricate plot. Aside from that, it's also pretty clear that the Velocipaster isn't just a low-budget flick for the fun of it, but also a parody of low-budget flicks for the fun of it. I mean, yes, I understand that you can only stretch a small budget so far, and cut-down effects will inherently look sillier, and you can lean into that, but it's crystal clear that that is, in fact, the joke, no question about it. And that's not to say it's not entertaining, but part of the fun I have watching B-movies is seeing just how far they try to stretch the budget. The Velocipaster is more of a celebration of not having a budget. That works for it, and it is a fun watch without a doubt. My only real gripe is that nothing really felt like it built up over time. Scenes came and went and served their purpose, but next to nothing actually built off what was established earlier. It's an entertaining watch, just a very bland story. Overall, the Velocipaster is the Velocipaster. You really don't need a review for this one. It gives you exactly what it advertises, and is fun, but shallow, coming in at two loves of your life, exploding to bits before you. Out of five. Why does this get a two when bad CGI sharks got a three? Well, for one thing, the latter actually did have a story that built up over time. Except for that intermission with Bernardo, I guess. Thank you all for watching. I'm Decker Shadow. And remember, China really is East. <laughs>
I don't believe you. Dinosaurs never existed. What, what are you going to get? Let's take a look at the Velocipaster and find out. <laughs> I'm a YouTuber.